Hey, hello everybody. So, we are going to be doing a video today to find out how your wick reveal height affects flame height. And what is a wick reveal? That's how far is your wick sticking above, let's bring this a little closer, how high is your wick sticking above your flame arrestor? In this case, my flame arrestor is this little glass tube. How far is the cotton sticking above that glass? And we're going to actually even start with the wick uh, below and see if it'll produce a flame flush, and then we're going to raise it at different heights above to see how that affects flame height. Um, these 1.8s produce an incredible amount of flame, almost too much flame in some applications, and so we're going to try to figure out what we can do to bring the flame height to uh, the level that you desire. So, you can see this is the same one we used from our last experiment, and it has a charred tip and it's been outside. So what am I going to do? I'm going to bring that up, and I'm just going to cut off the part that's charred. So now we have beautiful, fresh wick exposed here. I'm going to get that back in the, down in there. And I'm actually, my first test, I'm going to try to have it below the top. So you see it's not even actually sticking out. So that's going to be where we're going to run our first test. And I would say it's about a millimeter below right now. So you know me, I love to prime my wick. So we're going to shoot a little fresh fluid down that fresh cut, make sure we're going to have good video here so there you go that should be good and you always should go ahead and dry any excess fluid before you light and I have a fire extinguisher just off shot here and I also have access to an unlimited amount of water out of the kitchen spray faucet so uh, if anything goes wrong I'm set Make sure if you're going to use fire, you play it safe. So let's see if this will actually light below. Nope. It will not produce a flame, will it? Ah, you need to have it a little bit above. Okay, you see, we're, we're learning things here. So what do we have to do? Make sure I'm not going to burn myself. So now I am going to go with just a hair showing. Again, I got my fingers wet, so I'm going to dry them off so I don't light myself on fire. So now when I'm looking at it, I can just barely see a few threads sticking up above the glass height. So let's see what that'll do. So there you go. Let me go ahead and zoom in on that a little bit. Have to adjust her up a little bit here. So that is actually just about perfect, right? Zoom back a little bit. Let me go ahead and I'm going to open up a door real quick while this is uh, hopefully going to settle down to a nice flame we like. Because this is exactly, I got a comment from a very good customer that the 1 8 um, was just putting off a tremendous amount of flame. And then kind of see what she's talking about right here. So we're going to see if this is going to die down a little bit after the um, excess fluid has burned off. So you see it started off as a normal normal height. Let me go get some windows open so we don't set off a smoke alarm here. Hold on. So we'll let this run a little bit and see what happens with our flame here. You can see the cotton still hasn't even really gotten started getting charred yet. 
So we'll see if this dies down to a normal flame. Because I just have literally a couple threads exposed. So I think the next thing I'll do is maybe blow this out and see if I could push it even a little further in. Because, <laughs> wow, you'll see how little wick it takes to uh, pull in a tremendous amount of fluid. So, I guess the problem is my wick works working too well here. It's pulling a lot of fluid and making a lot of flame. So let's go ahead and give a measure on the height here. So we're probably a minute or two into letting this burn. And I'm getting about an inch and three quarter flame, you know, kind of sputters and goes. So about an inch and three quarter from the top of the glass to the top of, you know, where it's still a visible flame. Yeah, maybe as much as two inches. So we'll give this a little further and I think what I'm going to do is blow this out and try to poke that in a little bit and see what happens. Okay, so I've backed it in about a half a millimeter. Let's see what happens. So at this point here, um, I would say the wick is the topmost of the fibers are just flush with the glass. So whereas in the previous one, they were sticking above. Get rid of the landscape noise here. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good flame right here. Let's see if this doesn't go ahead and uh, produce a two or three inch flame after it's going for a little bit. You can see it actually did improve and got even a little more impressive here. So I would still call this a reasonable maybe <clears throat> ever so slightly more than a candle. So I don't know if you can see that there. I would say that's about an inch and a half uh, flame now. So you can definitely see that the positioning of the cotton in relation to the top of the flame arrestor does make a substantial amount of difference. You know, we were getting a flame up to about... I actually have to zoom out here. We were getting a flame up to about here, and that was literally a half millimeter difference in, in how much wick was showing. So with the tops of the threads just being a half millimeter to a millimeter above the glass, we were producing a flame up to here. I now have maybe one or two threads right flush. So my next step is gonna be to even push it another half millimeter in and see what happens. So I'm gonna blow this out. And I would say this is actually a pretty acceptable flame. Um, we'll do another measurement here. So yeah, I would call that inch a quarter, inch and a half to the top where you can see um, color. So this is now becoming much more like a candle flame. So we're going to blow this out and I'm going to try another quarter millimeter to a half millimeter tamping it in a little further. Okay, I would say that couldn't have been more than a quarter millimeter or so. So at this height, the majority of the majority of the fibers in here are now below the top of the glass, and there might be one or two fibers that are flush. Let's see if I can zoom in so you can get a good idea what that's looking like. So 
There is maybe one fiber here, but the majority of them are just about a half millimeter, even maybe below the flame arrestor. So you'll see, uh, you almost don't have to have wick showing at all, and this will make a very nice flame. Um, so it may be if your flame is getting uh, too much, you literally need to have it so that you almost can't see the wick uh, flush with the top of whatever you're fl using as a flame arrestor. So I say we keep going here. I'm going to see how far I can shove the wick into the hole below the top of the glass and, and still produce a flame. I'm going to blow this out. I'm going to zoom back. I'm going to bring the flame up to the camera so you can see. that the wick is actually below the glass height. So we're gonna blow this out and keep it going. We're making experiments here. Okay, that was about another quarter millimeter. So now, I would say there are no fibers above the glass height, and there may be the one burnt fiber you can kind of see at the edge of the glass here, might be at the level of the top of the glass. So that's pretty incredible, you actually have to run the wick. Uh, was, what, if you're talking about construction, you say it's below grade. <laughs> so you have to run the wick uh, actually pushed into the flame arrestor a little bit. That's absolutely amazing. Uh, this round cotton wick really pulls a tremendous amount of fluid. And uh, that's really incredible to see. So um, I'm beginning to come up with a solution here that maybe if your flame height is too high, you start with the the wick maybe even below grade you know below not revealing any wick at all and below the surface a little bit let me go ahead and bring that in so you can see what I'm talking about tilt it so you can really see so can you see that it's actually below the surface there I would say you know, I kind of put a little a little angle on the cut of the wick when I trimmed it up there. Uh, and so it's at a slope, and so part of it is almost to the top, and then on the back side, you'll see it's almost a millimeter or two below. And I'd call that a very reasonable flame. That's a candle height right there. So if you guys are having problems with your wick pulling too much fluid and producing a flame that's just crazy, um, keep pushing it in until you get down to something that's a candle height. That's looking real good. It's actually making an audible, audible sound it almost seems like. Okay, here you go. So I think we have success. Go ahead and get a measure on this, this height right here. You know, just to push the limits, we're going to see how, how flush we can go. I'm sorry, how deep in the hole you can go. So that is about a one inch flame right there. So we're going to blow this out, keep shoving that down in there and see how little wick you can have. You know, it's already below the surface of the glass. You know, see how far you can shove that in there. And uh, that's sure going to do a lot to preserve your wick too. Um, it's going to last a real long time if you don't even have to have any of it exposed. So let me blow it out and keep going. Ooh, I think we have reached the point where it will barely make a flame. We have reached the point where the majority of the wick, let's go ahead and get you in there, 
majority of the wick now is about two millimeters to a millimeter below right there below the glass level and we're still producing the flame let's go ahead and I'll back you out here and we'll bring the glass to the camera so you get a really good look at this see that but the entirety of that wick is below the glass and we're still getting flame okay so we're now down to about a one to three quarter inch flame very much like a candle See if I can get a tape measure in there so you can really get a good idea what's going on. So maybe at its peak an inch, I've got a window open so it's kind of pulling the flame a little bit sideways. So I'd say it's three quarter to an inch if we're standing full height up. So I think we have success here. Um, you can definitely see the reveal, or I should say the lack of reveal of the cotton wick makes a huge difference in your flame height. And uh, with my 1 8 cotton here, it's very interesting to see uh, that you really almost have to run it below, below your flame arrester and light it from there and you still get flame. And this is looking good, it's not going out, it's still pulling. And I'd say this is very efficient as far as uh, fuel use and also um, wick use. just ever so slightly starting to get charred you know like one point here one point there it's making very good use of the wick anyway so I think we're gonna wrap it up here this is a very long video but I, on these uh, demonstration ones I don't like to do any editing if possible sorry about that last one my battery died <laughs> so I always like make sure you got a fully charged battery before you do a video anyway so I think we're looking good here I hope this helps everybody out there um, Play with the uh, amount of wick you have showing above your flame arrester, and uh, you can customize and tune in your flame height uh, by adjusting wick height. Everybody have a good weekend. Thank you very much.